What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course this is TWA Motorsports and today we're starting, if you guys caught the last video talking about kind of the projects and what we're gonna be doing, today we're gonna be starting the engine pool on the 52. So like I said in the video guys, uh, this is something that I've wanted to do ever since I own this truck and we've got a good use for this motor now, putting it in the 54. Like I said, I think we're gonna end up selling the 54 and I didn't wanna spend the money to do an LS in the 54 and then sell it um, or wish that I would have done this instead or something else. Um, this is a truck that's not going anywhere. Uh, I love this truck, I love the stance. Every time I look at it, I and like I said, if something happened, we would keep this truck overall, but we are going to do that, guys. We are gonna be starting the process of taking the motor out. Um, look, I don't. I didn't put the motor in this truck. I bought this truck uh, with this. It's a, it's a 305 and a turbo 350 transmission. Um, I look, but it's dead reliable. It leaks a little bit around the valve covers like I talked about in the last video, but ultimately it's a pretty solid engine and transmission. So I would trust this thing to drive anywhere, but it's not an LS and that's what I want in this truck. And so we've got a bunch to do today. Um, we're going to probably start by unhooking the battery. That's why I opened this. Guys, I keep the fire extinguisher in here. I need to find a better mount for it, but let's start by unhooking the battery. Um, you guys, recently we had to put a new battery in this thing. So we're gonna start by unhooking that guy, uh, both the positive and the negative. Once we get that out of place, then we will move on under the hood and start disassembling some stuff. My goal is to pull the motor and trans as one unit, um, which means I'm probably gonna have to take all the front of this off. I'd like to not have to take the hood off. If I didn't have to, chances are I'll probably have to. I'd like to pull the motor straight out the front and uh, just kind of leave, leave it like that, get this motor and trans out of here and down to my buddy and uh, get it put in the 54. And at the same time, I'm dropping the motor and trans off. We're gonna be picking up the six liter in the 4L60, which is what we are gonna be putting in this truck. So anyway, let's get started. We got a lot of work to do and um, may have some time lapse in this. We may show you, just kind of break in and show you kind of what we're doing. But uh, yeah, let's get going. I already got the battery unhooked. So we're gonna move under here. We're gonna take this guy off. Set it to the side for now. And look, we got a lot of stuff to take out of place, but um, trying to figure out, we're going around the steering shaft, which we're not gonna be able to do. So I may have to unhook the plug wires in order to get that undone. But I think first, the, the first things first, guys, I wanna get this thing off the ground a little bit, get underneath it, possibly get all the transmission stuff unhooked. I need to get the drive shaft unhooked. I would really like to pull the drive shaft with it. Uh, I don't know if it'll stay in, but since it's a slip yoke, but um, just to keep you know as much transmission fluid out of my face that uh, we're gonna have. But I think before we jack it up and do that, let's take this guy off, this little closeout panel that holds kind of the radiator and the hood support and kind of see what we've got. So like I said, I'm gonna be cutting in and out, but um, I got the electric fan off because it did have an electric fan. So now what I'm working on getting off is it had those uh, probe type pieces that go into the radiator. And guys, these never work for me. Actually, this one failed. I had it hot wired to where it would just stay on all the time as far as the fan goes. So I'm just trying to snake all our wires out um, where they were put in before. We will not be reusing this at all. I gotta get this tape off or it won't come out. Um, there we go. So you can see what I'm talking about. It actually had two relays, one on each side. I don't know if one failed and they hooked up another one. Those things are garbage. I've never had one of those work. So obviously with the LS motor, it'll be controlled through the stock computer. So I did have to cut a couple wires. Obviously they tagged in for power, um, but we've got everything loose there. Um, I think I'm gonna have to clip some of these wire ties I also took the fans off, the fans, or sorry, the horns, they were mounted there. This is the horn relay here. Um, but I think I really need to probably at this point get underneath and start draining the radiator because I think the next thing I wanna take out, the grill is snug. Um, I took some of the bolts out of the bottom, but there's obviously more holding it in than that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, um, we'll probably knock these two out once I get the radiator drain, but I got to get a pan under there so I don't have an absolute mess 
Well, let me tell you something about old cars versus new cars, guys. Um, for one, everything's standard, you know, so it's not metric on an old car. And um, you got to take 10 things apart to get one thing apart. So it's, it, it, it was really well engineered back in the day. But here was my goal. I thought, you know what, I'll leave the fenders on. I'll take the grill out, right? So you can see I got the radiator out. And I was starting to unbolt these guys, but they got a nut on the bottom. They're not a captured nut, so I need help um, holding the bottom while I loosen the top. But here's what I've decided to do. Look, I got the grill loose all the way around. So there's bolts that go all the way down the side, the ones that hold it from the bottom. But here's my issue. If I do it that way, there's two screws that come in from the back side I cannot get access to. All right? And that's because I believe you assemble I, I don't know how they do I don't know how they did this. Um, I'm assuming they assembled the grill and put the front end all, all as one piece. So with that being said, I think instead of like loosening up our support for our um, radiator, I'm going to take the two front fenders, the inners and everything out as one piece. So what I'm going to do to keep this a little more stationary is I'm going to run some of the bolts back in that I started to loosen up. I'm going to get those snug and then I'm going to start working my way down and loosening up now these bolt it to the inner fender so i don't think i'll have to take those loose but every connection point so like the bottom of the radiator where it bolts to the frame and where the inners bolt to the which i may have to take the wheels off but where the inners bolt to the front of the truck anywhere it bolts to the frame anything that's like on the firewall so like these guys i'm gonna have to take out uh hopefully that's a captured nut for these supports um I think it'll just be easier to take it off all off in one piece and then I'm not, I don't have a ton of bolts scattered around and I'm not fighting myself trying to take this off or that off. Just to give you an idea where we're at now, you can see I got those braces off, right? But then I got the bolts that hold the fender to the body. So there's three that go down this side and they go into a bracket that's pre-threaded. So we had to pull the inner off it. You see the inner right there on the inside. But then the outer, there's bolts that come along the cab up along the arch. On the other side, it's a little bit different in the fact you have to pull back the carpet in order to get the half inches that go into the inner fender and the outer fender. So it's a little bit different. This definitely escalated quickly. Um, guys, you can see what I'm talking about. Three bolts, one, two, three, four. I guess there were four bolts there. Four bolts here, three bolts there. We're off two bolts on the bottom of the radiator. So you can see like guys, this thing has been subbed off a, uh, I think it's a Monte Carlo is what they used. Uh, so we, here's what we need to do. We need to continue taking stuff apart. Um, we've got a lot of stuff out of the way. You have no idea how much easier it's going to make life just having a lot of this stuff out of the way. So I'm just going to go through and start picking stuff and unhooking it. So like I need to unhook the fuel line, I need to unhook the exhaust, we need to unhook the uh, throttle cable, the electronics for the um, distributor. Uh, I already unhooked the spark plug wires that went around the steering shaft. We, so we've got, holy cow, do we have a lot of stuff out of the way and um, it's just gonna make life easier. I think I am gonna take the bumper bracket off so he obviously had to weld a bumper bracket on this in order to make it fit the frame. You could see where he lopped off the front of the frame um, and the clearance he had to make. That's not the greatest. But um, look, guys, the, the goal here is to kind of make things nicer as we go. So I'm going to probably have a buddy of mine run over some welds, box some stuff in that I don't like. But all in all, we have way more room now. So I'm gonna get started on getting all that stuff unhooked. Probably gonna start with the exhaust. I've, I sprayed it down with some PB Blaster, WD-40. Uh, sprayed a lot of the bolts I thought I'd have problems with. But I think pulling this out now is gonna be way easier. Now have throttle cable unhooked. As you can see, I got all the electronics. So from the starter over, and they're all draped over here to the right now. And um, got all the exhaust bolts out. Starter's unhooked, grounds are unhooked. There are no electronics left on the motor, uh, which look, these older motors, they don't have much. I gotta get the fuel line loose. I gotta get the power steering loose. I gotta get the motor mounts loose. But before I do all that, obviously those, some of those are gonna make a mess. I want to get under it and go ahead and just unbolt the cross member for the transmission probably. 
I don't know if I'm going to do that yet, but I need to get, I did unhook the shift linkage. You can see there, I need to get it unhooked from the bottom. I need to get the exhaust unbolted all the way back. I tried to lift it up a little more. I may have to go a little higher and, um, yeah, we're getting really, really close. Got the exhaust out. You can see it laying up over there against the garage. Cam's out here sweeping, trying to help me clean up my messes. I also got the 9 16ths to our nine inch. Boy, believe me, it's nice not having a floor. Got the exhaust out from under. Guys, the only thing I have left to do is, I believe, the transmission cross member. Once we get that unhooked, and so what I'm thinking, I'm gonna put a jack under the tail shaft just to hold some pressure on it while I finish taking the rest of the stuff off the front. And by the rest of the stuff, I mean the motor mounts, the power steering, which I'd like to wait till last because the mess, and the gas. The gas will dry up. I'm not as concerned about it, but we're close. I'd really like to drag that drive shaft out, like I said, with the transmission so we don't spill a bunch of fluid out. We'll just have to see as we go. Go time, guys. I've got every single thing unhooked. Got the fuel line unhooked. You could see I looped one of the um, power steering lines back into the top. I uh, got the transmission cross member unhooked. I actually just unhooked the bolts from the bottom so the cross member is still there to kind of keep things sturdy. Now I just got to figure out how I'm going to chain this up. I think I'm going to go around the manifolds. That seemed to work best for me in the past. So I think I'll just loop the chain around both manifolds and we will start hoisting this thing up and uh, hopefully we won't have any issues. I may, I got the motor mounts out, but I may have to take, I don't know if I can get it up high enough. Um, it's really close to the firewall with the distributor. I think I'll probably be able to get it up there, but if not, then I may have to knock those off and drag it forward a little bit before um, I could start lifting it up. We'll just have to see. You remember how I said, man, I really wanna keep the drive shaft in. I don't know if you guys can see my puddle down there. It's growing. I finally, I, I got something underneath it to catch some of it so we wouldn't have as big a mess, but I've got the engine bolted up. I got, we're cleared the motor mounts. You can see we're starting to catch here. I've got a little ways to go. I do not want to take the hood off this thing. So what I'm thinking is once I clear the oil filter, which I could technically take off, but the motor's still got oil in it. Um, I'm going to let the trans drain for a little bit. I'm going to pump it up a little bit more until I get to max out point up top. Once I get to that point, I think I'll be far enough where I can pull it forward and then maybe set it back down. And then worst case scenario, guys, I'll put a couple jacks under the truck and let the truck down. And um, that'll, we can kind of balance back and forth being able to get this out without having to um, take the hood off because I don't want to try to realign the hood. So either way, uh, we're getting there little by little. And uh, we did rub a little bit on the firewall with the distributor, but I think we're good. Uh, wasn't much. Let's keep pumping and see what happens. Woo, guys, I'm out of breath. Okay, it's out. Um, didn't, I, I was able to clear the hood actually. So you can see that I put a ratchet strap to help level out the transmission. Once I did that, then everything was good. I could lower it back down a little bit once I cleared all this stuff. But now I have a big cleaning mess in front of me. And um, you can see this guy, I'm gonna let it drain off for a while before I try cleaning any of that junk because it's just gonna continue to make a mess. But I got, I think I'm gonna clean it there. I'm gonna set it back down because here's what I think is gonna happen. I think when I set it down, the fuel line is gonna drain. And so we're gonna have some more stuff to clean up. But I'd like to put it on my wheel dollies, like my Gojacks so I can kind of push it over out of the way for one, so we can still access stuff in here and I can move it kind of where I need it to be. But two, I'm not gonna crawl under the truck to get the transmission fluid cleaned up. So I'd like to just kind of swing it out of the way and get everything clean. Well, I don't know about you guys, but it makes me feel so much better when I have a big mess. I just can't go in and leave like transmission fluid all over the ground. It's just not in me, but we are complete and look guys i know i didn't show you like a step by step um just kind of talked about what i was doing but look this thing subframed like off a of malibu or a, um, a g body is what the suspension setup is and so honestly looking at it it's not terrible um there's some spots that i'd like to have a buddy of mine like maybe weld some plate into the hood's not wanting to stay up now there come on um 
you know, like this section where they cut out for the water or the fuel pump, that looks kind of tacky. I'd like to fix that. I don't think, you know, initially I thought maybe I'll put a Mustang II in this, but honestly, guys, they didn't do a terrible job as far as boxing back here. It looks pretty good. Um, I'm not going to complain about that. I am probably going to clean it up. I may brush some POR 15 or something on it. We'll just have to see as, uh, as we go. But yeah, ultimately, wasn't that bad of a job, uh, you know? I, like I said, I'm sorry I didn't show you all of it or each little thing I undone, but really it'd be different for each person. So this wasn't meant to be a how-to. It's just kind of bringing you along with what we were doing in the shop. Got all the wiring kind of hung up there, and I don't know. We got a lot of cleaning to do, that's for sure. And then this guy is ready to go to my buddy. Uh, we'll probably load it up in the next day or two. Like I said, at the same time we do that, we're going to bring the LS home. I think probably, guys, what I'll do is I'll put the LS together. Well, it's together already, but I may put the transmission on it. And kind of like loosely start to set it in the truck and and I will bring you along as we do more of that stuff kind of talking about because ultimately guys in order to get a good finished product in my opinion you need to put it together take it back apart paint anything you want to paint uh, drill the holes before you paint and uh, I don't know if I'm going to paint the firewall why it's out or the inner fenders um, I'm not really sure we'll just have to see as we go but like I said I'm not in a hurry here you can see all the parts I've got strung out Got the front end here. I got the bumper in front of the OBS over there. The close out here. Got the U-joints, which by the way, guys, I left the, the drive shaft came out, so I just left it in there because there's a safety loop in the back. And then the manifolds, I'm gonna take those with me. This truck uh, has had cruise control on it. My uncle actually put cruise control on this truck. He used to own this truck back in the day. He did the cruise control, so I've got that sitting here. That won't be going back on. As you can see, I've also got the exhaust setting over there and we'll be doing something completely different that looks terrible fan i won't be reusing uh and then i've got a label i know where these go but i got a label the bags i didn't have any bags out here while i was doing this but all in all guys it is a part and i know i know what somebody's gonna say look you got that apart yep that apart yep that apart yep got the suburban outside yep look we'll get there eventually that's a fact but if you guys did enjoy this video, please like always smash that thumbs up button. Guys, if you are not subscribed, go down there, hit that subscribe button. Of course, like always, ring the bell notification. That notifies you every single time we drop a new video. Go check out TWAMotorsports.com. Pick yourself up a hat, a shirt, a hoodie. Help support the channel. Help make this stuff happen faster. And stay tuned to see what we work on next.